Hey everyone, Wide Andrews Workshop here, and welcome to the, well this isn't really a new series, but it's the first proper episode of Orwell Zoo. Um, this is the exact same zoo that we're doing our South America, not South America, Southeast Asia builds in, um, but um, to get content out, um, I wanted to also tour some of the other stuff I've been building, because um, I have a big collab coming up, and I won't have a whole lot of time to make videos of new stuff I've built, so um, I just thought it would be a good idea to, um, in order to get stuff out there, we'd look around some of the stuff I had done before I started working on Southeast Asia in this zoo. So this is the entrance to Orwell Zoo. Um, if you can see, it says Iowa's Orwell Zoo, because I looked at um, states in the U.S. that didn't really have a big prominent zoo, and Iowa was one of them. I think they have like a couple roadside zoos, but no like gigantic Midwestern AZA zoo like um, Cincinnati or Columbus or Henry Dorley. So um, I just thought I'd give, <laughs> I would very generously give the people of Iowa um, a big sort of, you know, proper accredited facility. So um, I'm not sure where the name Orwell came from. It's not based on the author, like George Orwell, like Animal Farm 1984. Um, I remember, because um, this was okay backtracking backstory time um orwell zoo was actually the first zoo i ever built um back in november of 2019 um but i went back um last november so 2020 and completely ripped it out and have just been um starting from scratch ever since um and i think for the name orwell i um, looked up like town name generators and orwell was or well was what came up or or with an e instead of just o r well um so yeah i i thought it sounded like kind of nice and official had a nice ring to it so that's what we went with so um this is the entrance um it's based on hogel zoo in utah they have the same thing so it says utah's hogel zoo iowa's orwell zoo um then i used the um ooh, excuse me I used the girders for roofs just because they have really nice texture and you can actually get like shadows on them if I, unlike if I use like a um, normal metal clad one. And it's a pretty simple entrance building. Um, this is where you get tickets. I should probably put a sign that says admissions up here. Um, we got a nice lion statue. And then if we turn around, this is the parking. Ooh, hold on. This is the parking lot <laughs> so far. Um, if you zoom out, all of this sand plot will be um, the rest of it, just because obviously it's a pretty big zoo. We're not gonna, we're not just gonna have this little parking lot with a few dozen spots. It's, it's gonna have to be bigger. But um, what we've got so far, I'm actually really happy with, um, like this like curb with like the different um, colors about like parking and stuff like that. It's all came out really well. Um, and then these like rows, they're pretty temporary. Um, they're a little bit janky right now, but um, the basic idea is there. We'll get to this someday. Um, and then yeah, um, we'll actually walk down this way a little bit. Um, there's some more parking up on this side, and then I have um, these little like sliding gates for um, vehicles to come into the backstage areas. Um, as you can see, I'm not really done with this. But yeah, more of that like those color coded curbs. Um, if I ever, if I'm ever talking about this and sound like I have no idea what I'm talking about, it's because I don't even have my driver's license yet. So, yeah, take everything I say about parking and um, like r r road rules with a grain of salt. Um, and then we, on this side, we have another um, gate, and um, there will be staff parking and access over here. Um, and then this is just this little area is all disabled parking, and then. Um, and we have this little building. Um, this is this is all directly ripped from Hogel. Um, I don't know what this building's purpose is. I might just convert it into a restroom because as you can see there's no door here yet. But um, yeah, this is the entrance. Um, I found this on the workshop. I really I really loved how it looked. It's a little um, visit us online um, poster with like Instagram and Tumblr and YouTube. And um, I just thought it was a great little touch that like a zoo would totally have. Um, in the modern day, and then we'll come through in the entrance. Speaking of modern day, we have hand sanitizers and um, a little social distancing sign. Hopefully I'll be able to take this down soon. Um, pandemic seems to be coming to a close, at least in the US, but um, yeah. 
we're not gonna we're not gonna get too far into that for the sake of time and emotions running high and all that. But um, yeah, this is the entrance um, coming through. We got the little paw print, paw prints um, six feet apart, and then this is the sort of entrance village. Um, I get, we got these little um, flower cedar things. Um, Looks pretty cool. This, these are definitely a highlight. These little banners um, with the lamp post and the little um, custom made animal banners attached. Um, each one is a different one. Um, I wish we had more signs like these for um, different animals. Right now there's only like 10 or so. Um, it would be a great addition in that style because um, these are super, super useful for like signage and um, just like general decoration. And then over here, we have the uh, Flamingo Cafe. This was directly based on the Leaping Lemur Cafe at the San Francisco Zoo. Um, pretty much the exact same like architecture style. Um, coming inside, I really love how this came out. Um, these little um, roof or ceiling support beams that sort of cross over. Um, and then this kind of... I don't know what kind of shape this would be. I was going to say hexagonal, but there's obviously way more sides than that. Um, but yeah. And then we have these little, like, um, brick, these little brick um, curbs that come through. Um, if I was patient enough, I would have this little brick um, side path throughout the whole zoo, but um, I don't really want to go insane. So we're just going <laughs> to, we're just going to keep it to this little entrance village. And then, um, yeah, inside, it's pretty simple. Um, a little bit of seating, um, and I actually built this when um, Orwell Zoo was a franchise mode zoo, so I actually had like um, these little these little in-game like restaurant booths or whatever um, that I definitely wouldn't use in sandbox mode, but I still think it looks pretty good, so I'm not going to change it. And then um, the zoo store, um, I haven't done, I have yet to do an interior for this, but. Um, I just threw these little shelves up front just to give the illusion of something actually being inside here. And yeah, we got some of these potted plants, um, my custom trash cans as usual. And then um, we're actually, we're not going to go down here yet. Um, we're going to go to the left, past the outdoor seating, another tiny frozen ball stand. And this is the Conrad Previs Seal Harbor. Um, Conrad Previs is like a I guess he's a philanthropist or something, um, and um, he funds a lot of the exhibits at the San Diego Zoo. Um, I guess he came over to Orwell one day and just decided he'd help out with the seal exhibit too. I just think that name, at least for me, kind of just invokes like a um, an official like sponsored zoo exhibit. Um, just so, so so I just threw that up there. And um, yeah, as you can see, I'm not completely done with the Flamingo Cafe. I have all of this stuff to fill out, but. Um, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, this building, I'm not going to spoil what's in here yet. That'll be for the next episode or whenever I show this off because um, there's a few, there's one more episode of Southeast Asia left after this. Um, I'll actually zoom out and kind of tease what's going on over there. If you can, if you can see to the far right. Um, but that probably won't be done for a little while just because that's, it's definitely going to be the most elaborate part of the um, area. So, oh, I just realized where we ended up. Here we go. So yeah, this is the Seal Harbor. We got a little bathroom over here. Um, I really love how these came out. I made these myself, um, little um, different signs for the restrooms. And then um, we can go up into the, oh wait, no, hold on. Here we go. So this is your first look into the underwater bit for the Seal Harbor. Um, yeah, it's just a pretty simple um, underwater view with some rocks and stuff. And then we can actually go up into the official section. So I reused these signs from my um, sea lion exhibit at the in my Griffith Zoo build, which isn't dead, but um, I'm not really working on it. I'm just taking a hiatus because I'm um, I'm much more invested in other projects like this and Gold Coast Aquarium. Um, so yeah, there's that. That's that. And then we have another um, sponsor sign wall thing, and then um, you get like a kind of half underwater, half um, above view for this part, um, and I love how you can see the clock tower in the background pretty much anywhere. It's such a cool vista. Um, and yeah, uh, moving up, um, I talked about these um, staircases in the last episode. I used them in the um, Sea Eagle Aviary, and let's press play.
and here are the boys. Um, I used gray seals. Um, I don't really know if I'm going to pretend these guys are harbor seals like I did for the Gold Coast Aquarium exhibit, but it doesn't really matter just because there's no specific like um, theme I'm going for in terms of like geography. But yeah, um, it seems a little small, but it's actually um, over the size required um, for like the husbandry manual. So um, I often like to keep track of that when building just so it can help like formulate my work. And yeah, um, another, some more info signs. And then this elevator, um, if, you're, um, if you have accessibility issues, you wouldn't go up the stairs, you would actually come through here and then take the elevator um, up to the top level and um, yeah, you get to see the seals from there and then come back down because um, we actually have the staircase continuing down this way and this would be like the seal like um, staff well not the staff like I guess training slash isolation area because I know they need um, like an isolation pool um, but I guess this would also double as their training pool because um, I also based this off the Los Angeles Zoo's one and um, they seem to um, recycle purposes for this specific backstage pool. But I also made it like like available for guests to come check it out, but um, I feel like for the most part the seals would be in their main um, pen and then you'd, you'd get to see them back here every once in a while and there's like a little bit of um, info about like checkups and stuff like that. And maybe they'd have like a um, feeding session like at a specific time that people would come see. I don't know. Um, if someone knows more about like seal um, exhibit layout, definitely um, let me know what I got right and wrong. Um, and then what else do I want to talk about? Um, we talked about the bathroom. Oh yeah, the backstage. So um, yeah, we have, this is their main holding facility. Um, I looked at the pits. Yeah, Pittsburgh Zoo um, for this they have like um, coming up here um, this ladder and then these like little I guess like stepping stones like towards like all of the different um, aircon units and windows and stuff like that but for the most part it's like a it's like a green roof so they have all of these plants up here with some soil and then we have some little um, some water treatment facilities and some pipes and stuff like that um, I'm not super well versed in this kind of stuff so I just kind of throw stuff around and um hope it looks convincing but um yeah as for the i haven't really looked in here yet so this is um more into their main area and um i recycled these rocks from my work in tivoli um in rubles like coastal expedition area when i was revising that um i just think they look super good with the combo of temple pieces and um flexi color rocks so um i definitely I'm going to be using these pretty much everywhere I um, have like a coastal exhibit. And then you can see um, a little teaser of what's going on back there. That will be for in a future episode. And then um, what else did I want to talk about? Hmm. I don't know because like, um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about like just how much I love um, building seal and other marine mammal exhibits just because they're so like focused on rock work as opposed to like more... Um, Oh, hey, flamingos. We'll, we'll, we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're so, like, focused on, like, rock work and, um, like, terrain elevation because of, like, the different, like, views into the water. And I just think they're really fun to, like, experiment on and look at references for. And um, you'll definitely see me um, coming back to pinniped and otter exhibits in the future. And this is already the second video on the channel that um, looks at um, a seal exhibit, so... Oh, you guys really like the, the wooden platform, don't you? But yeah, this is um, the Seal Harbor exhibit, and um, we'll just zoom out into the whole zoo. Um, we'll probably look at the, the giraffe yard over there, the primate house, and the um, flamingos, and the reptile house, and then the um, what's going to be the last part of Southeast Asia in the future. We'll probably have my buddy Lion come on to look at that with me. And yeah, I'll see you in whatever comes first and have a good one.